Benjamin, you nasty you. Your crime has shocked me to the core. Never in my whole career have I encountered this before. Guards, seize him, lock him in a cell. Throw the keys into the Nile as well. Each of the brothers fell to his knees. Show him some mercy, almighty one, please. He would not do this, he must have been framed. Jail us and beat us, we should be blamed. It is with these words that the musical presents the climax of the Joseph story. But if we look at the Parsha itself, we can see that some poetic license has been taken. There is no chorus of pleading brothers. Rather, we are told, Vayigash Yehuda, and then Judah approached, and he said. Judah, who twenty years earlier had instigated the sale of Joseph into slavery, now comes before Joseph, who has still not revealed his identity, and Judah beseeches Joseph not to let the family become further fragmented. Judah pleads that it will kill his father, admitting that Jacob has not yet recovered from the loss of his first son. I have taken responsibility for Benjamin, says Judah. Let me take his place. For how can I go up to my father if the youth is not with me? When it came to selling Joseph, Judah had been responsible. Now, when it comes to saving Benjamin, Judah takes responsibility. And Joseph melts. The rabbis debate exactly what it is in Judah's speech that triggers Joseph's decision to reveal who he really is, and there are three popular answers. The classic answer is that Joseph sees Judah defending Benjamin, and he realizes that the brothers now act with responsibility for each other. Secondly, Joseph realizes that previously he'd only considered his own grief, ignoring his father's feelings. Some suggest that he was angry with Jacob, and wondered why he had never been in touch. But now Judah makes a telling point. Don't imagine that it'll be easy for Dad to lose a second child. Parents have feelings too. And Joseph melts when he realizes that Jacob still misses him. Finally, now that Joseph hears Judah petition on behalf of his father's grief, he realizes that he is no longer the sole family representative of moral rectitude. In fact, Joseph himself has learnt a lesson. Whereas Joseph had only looked for salvation in the future, Judah cares equally for the present and the past. Judah doesn't only speak of responsibility for Judah and Benjamin, but Judah and Benjamin and Jacob. This is the decisive, telling moment in the whole saga. It's often asked why on his deathbed Jacob blesses Judah and gives him sovereignty so that Judah would become the great-grandparent of our kings, David and Solomon, etc., and commentators trace the answer back to this speech that Judah just made. We might have thought that after everything that Joseph had achieved, he would be rewarded with sovereignty, but this is not the case. Joseph successfully did what was pragmatic and necessary to build up for the future. But Judah demonstrated a longer-lasting greatness. He had the ability to build a head upon the respectful foundations of the past. How can I look my father in the eye if I only do what is pragmatic? How can I build a way forwards if I burn my bridges with my past? The Jewish future is not just about moving the present tense onwards, nor is it about maintaining the status quo about Jewish continuity. The Jewish future is about forging a destiny honestly rooted in our heritage. How can I go to my father and the child not be with me? Judaism moves on with glory, but we must always be accountable to our roots. This is Rabbi Jeremy Lawrence from the Great Synagogue in Sydney, wishing you a Shabbat Shalom.